a very good morning to all i am gunta lakshmi narayana district neat faculty in zoology at super 60 dupalwalsa srikakulam district in our earlier chapter we discussed the alimentary canal and now today we are going to deal with the histology of alimentary canal and the digestive glands they are included in the digestive system part 2 of my lessons okay first of all the histology of alimentary canal alimentary canal is a long tube measuring about 8 to 10 meters in human beings which starts with mouth and ends with anus this alimentary canal the walls of the alimentary canal from esophagus to rectum possess four layers the wall of the alimentary canal from esophagus to rectum possesses possesses four layers okay the outermost layer is called as the serosa this is serosa outermost layer is called as serosa okay which is made up of thin mesothelium and also some connective tissue this is the outermost layer of the alimentary canal okay the second layer is called as muscularis this muscularis it is made up of smooth muscles smooth muscles they are arranged in two rows that is inner circular muscles and outer longitudinal muscles this muscularis is made up of inner circular muscles and outer longitudinal muscles this muscularis is also called as muscularis externa below this muscularis externa there is one more layer that is called as submucosa this submucosa it is supplied with blood vessels lymph vessels and nerves okay and the innermost layer surrounding the gut the innermost layer is called as the mucosa mucosa this is the innermost layer which uh, surrounds the gut okay and this inner mucosa is made up of columnar epithelial cells columnar epithelial cells this mucosa layer forms irregular folds you can observe here the irregular folds irregular folds these irregular folds the irregular folds okay particularly these irregular folds are observed in stomach they are called as rugae gastric rugae gastric rugae whereas they are also observed in small intestine small finger like structures foldings they are called as the villi in small intestine these are uh, formed by inner mucosa okay coming to the digestive glands digestive glands gastric glands brunner's glands crypts of lieberkuhn salivary glands liver and pancreas they all constitute the digestive glands out of these the brunner's glands and crypts of lieberkuhn they are present in the walls of the small intestine the secretions of these two glands is called as intestinal juice which is also called as succus entericus succus entericus the gastric glands which are present in the walls of the stomach gaster means stomach they secrete gastric juice salivary glands in turn they secrete saliva liver secretes bile juice pancreas secretes pancreatic juice okay now discuss let us discuss the salivary glands okay there are three pairs of salivary glands in humans the three pairs of salivary glands are parotid glands submaxillary glands sublingual glands these are parotid glands okay these are submaxillary glands also called as submandibular glands these are sublingual glands in such a way there are three pairs of salivary glands in humans okay whereas in other mammals there are four pairs of salivary glands okay the parotid glands the parotid glands present below the pinna are 
the inner surfaces of the cheek okay these parotid glands are the glands majorly affected in mumps by a virus called as paramyxovirus whereas the submaxillary glands submaxillary glands these are also called as submandibular glands they are present at the angles of the jaw bone particularly the lower jaw bone angles of the lower jaw bone okay coming to the third type of gland salivary gland sublingual gland sublingual it is present below the tongue below the tongue that's why it is called as sublingual gland okay the secretions of these three glands sublingual submaxillary parotid the secretions of these three glands these three, three pairs of glands is called as saliva the ph of the saliva is 6.8 okay the three pairs of glands in human beings secrete saliva the saliva contains tialin or alpha amylase or salivary amylase the enzyme present in saliva is tialin or alpha amylase or salivary amylase it also contains the saliva also contains lysogen which kills the microorganisms that try to enter the gut it also contain mucin which is responsible for making the food slippery okay the saliva major constituent of the saliva is water which measures about 99.5 percent is almost of all the saliva it contains water coming to the next gland that is gastric gland the gastric glands they are present in the walls of the stomach as you already studied the stomach is made up of three regions okay the cardiac region the fundic region the pyloric region in some other textbooks the body is also there okay this cardiac region contains cardiac glands cardiac glands the fundic region it contains fundic glands fundic region it contains fundic glands and whereas the pyloric region pyloric portion contains pyloric glands let us thus discuss this cardiac glands cardiac glands they secrete mucus all the th three types of glands they secrete mucus and the pyloric glands they secrete mucus along with this mucus it also secrete they also secrete gastrin they also secrete gastrin this gastrin it stimulates the secretion of gastric acid particularly the gastric acid is hcl and coming to the next gastric gland that is the fundic gland fundic gland okay this fundic gland it contains a number of types of cells and the neck cells present in the fundic glands neck cells present in the fundic glands they secrete mucus okay the chief cells these chief cells are also called as peptic cells as they secrete pepsinogen an enzyme responsible for the digestion of proteins okay it also secretes low amounts of gastric lipase low amounts of gastric lipase okay and the final the auxentic cells are parietal cells parietal cells they secrete hcl these auxentic cells secrete hcl and casil's intrinsic factor this casil's intrinsic factor is responsible for the absorption of b12 vitamin b12 cyanocobalamin okay the secretions of these glands gastric glands is called as gastric juice okay the ph of this gastric juice is 0.92 1.8 0.92 1.8 coming to the next gland gland intestinal glands intestinal glands they are present in the walls of the intestine walls of the intestine contains brenner's glands and crypts of lebercon okay these two gland types of glands they secrete intestinal juice this intestinal juice is also called as sucus 
enterocus succus enterocus the ph of the succus enterocus is 7.528 7.528 and it contains peptidases disaccharides and lipases along with these a hormone activator enterokinase is also secreted the peptidases the peptidases it includes tri tripeptidases dipeptidases amino peptidases whereas these disaccharides they include sucrase which is also called as invertase and maltase and also lactase which are responsible for the digestion of carbohydrates these peptidases tripeptidases dipeptidases amino peptidases they are responsible for the digestion of proteins the lipase lipase it is responsible for digestion of fats enterokinase is an enzyme activator okay coming to the next gland liver as you know liver is the largest gland of our body and it measures about it weighs about 1.2 to 1.5 kg in adult humans okay it has two lobes the liver is bilobed structure and it has it contains a number of hexagonal cells these cells are called as hepatic globules these hepatic globules are the structural and functional units of the liver and these structural and functional units they contain hepatic cells arranged in the form of cords hepatic cells are arranged in the form of cords these are hepatic cells hepatocytes these are hepatocytes okay and each lobe each lobe is covered by a connective tissue sheath called as glissens capsule glissens capsule you will also can observe the sinusoids in between the cords in between the cords in between the cords they are sinusoids okay and the bile juice which is secreted by the liver is stored in gall bladder gall bladder this is gall bladder okay this is gall bladder a sac like structure and the bile secreted by the liver is stored in uh, this gall bladder okay the cystic duct of gall bladder and hepatic duct together form a bile bile duct this is the cystic duct which arises from the sac like gall bladder and uh, this is the hepatic duct they both together unite to form a common bile duct okay the common bile duct the common bile duct okay this common bile duct and pancreatic duct together form a hepatopancreatic duct which is also called as ampulla of water this ampulla of water opens into the duodenum duodenum and which is guarded the opening is guarded by sphincter of wood this is ampulla of water and this is guarded by sphincter of woody sphincter of woody coming to the next gland pancreas pancreas it is the second largest gland in our body second largest gland which is also called as a mixed gland mixed gland because it secretes both enzymes and hormones means it acts as an exocrine gland and also endocrine gland that's why it is called as a mixed gland the exocrine part it secretes the enzymes endocrine part it secretes the hormones okay it is situated between the limbs of c shaped duodenum this is duodenum this c shaped duodenum in the limbs of this c shaped duodenum the pancreas is located and the juice secreted by the pancreas is called as pancreatic juice the ph of this pancreatic juice is 8.4 okay this pancreatic juice it comprises it contains trypsinogen chymotrypsinogen carboxypeptidases steatin nucleases sodium bicarbonate and also pancreatic amylase the trypsinogen chymotrypsinogen they are all responsible for the digestion of proteins 
and steatopsin it is also called as pancreatic lipase pancreatic lipase it is responsible for the di digestion of lipids fats okay nucleases they include dnaas rnaas which are responsible for di the digestion of dna and rna this sodium bicarbonate is responsible for maintenance of alkaline ph alkaline ph this pancreas the cystic duct of gall bladder and hepatic duct together form a common bile duct the cystic duct and hepatic duct together form a common bile duct and this common bile duct and pancreatic duct that arises from the pancreas together form an a hepatopancreatic duct this hepatopancreatic duct is also called as ampulla of water the ampulla of water it opens into the duodenum and the opening of the ampulla of water into the duodenum is guarded by a sphincter called as sphincter of d most important bit okay thank you uh, for watching this video in our next video uh, we are going to discuss the mechanism of uh, digestion and also the uh, discharges of the digestive tract Thank you.